to record. Hi. Make sure you grab some coffee because we're going to be doing 3.3. So, first things to talk about on 3.3 is imagine that we've got this turn in moment here and it's pointed off in this direction. It's going clockwise. Now it's using I would normally use X and Y in my cut plane, but it's using X pointing upwards. So that's my first finger. Y, second finger, is my Y axis. Z is my thumb. Okay, so... So... When I rotate this M... I'm going to imagine I can uh, split this turning moment up into two components, one going along this axis, one going along this axis. So when I rotate it and move it down to this axis, we can see that we've got it pointing off in the Z direction, and it's going in a clock... Is it a clockwise sense? Or is it... No, it's, it's going... Yeah, it's going in a clockwise sense in the Z direction. Right, whereas when I rotate it in here and off in this direction it's going to go clockwise. That's good. But the problem is, is the Y is pointing in the opposite direction. So when we look at the moment, turning moment along the Y axis, we're going to have to reverse the sign for that particular case. So let's start off with the tricky one, which is the Y. So the Y, we're going to rotate in this direction first. We're happy because it's going clockwise, but Y is going that way, so then we make it minus. So let's start with MY. Uh, looking from above, got Y in that direction, Z in that direction, and I've got my M going off in this direction of 12 kilo newton meters. It's a 345 triangle like that. So when I am going to make it in pointing in the y direction, we have minus 4 over 5 times 12. And that will be minus 6 point, uh, minus 9.6 kilonewton meters. So notice we're pointing in the wrong direction. Okay, so we're pointing upwards, but y is pointing downwards. Right, now swing this through this direction, not a problem. MZ, swing through, and that would be 3 over 5 times 12, which will be 7.2 kilonewton meters. Right, so that's finding the M's. Now let's have a look at your your problem from above. So we're applying the turning moment in effect about its centroid here and we're applying a squashy moment here in the Z and for the Y we're going in the opposite sense so for our Y, we have to be a bit careful. So although we are turning in this direction, okay, when I measure, so I'm, so I measure Z, I'm fine. I'm getting I'm getting a negative. Yeah, that's good. So when I'm measuring my distance from the axis Y, I'm measuring a Z distance, 
and it's a positive z that I'm measuring and I end up with a, a minus stress yeah because I'm going to stick this basically into m shouldn't really use y m y divided by i well the y is either going to be z or it's going to be y now for the z one everything's fine okay so we're coming down here we're measuring this distance y Yeah, so Z, then I'm looking at this point, which will be point C. I know, I will know that I will want to squash this, uh, make it negative. So I, I'm guessing the best way to think about this is that um, just simply think about it which way, which corner is going to get squashed the most. So it's twisting around that way, it's going to be this corner. So just make sure that your signs are lining up correctly with that. So let's start with that corner. This seems the, the most logical one to start with. Um, and we'll start with the Z axis here. So, so here going down in this sense so the total stress will be a combination of m z y divided by i z that's my axis that I'm going through and that needs to be negative because that's a positive there so that's a negative the next one here we've already got a negative there so we're measuring this distance z so that's a positive distance so we end up with um, plus m y z over i y okay so we're going to get the negative from there and that will go into that term. So that will, that will give me my um, stress in that corner and that will give me a nice big negative stress. I need to work out what IZ is. So IZ is when I cut it this way. So that means the breadth is going to be uh, 0.2 and the depth will be 0.4 for IZ so when we stick that into that I will end up with 1.067 times 10 to the minus 3 okay now when I uh, I'm looking for my I y the things are turning in this direction so this is going to be my depth so I y my depth will be the point 2 this time and my breadth will be the point 4 so put them in and we're going to end up with a slightly smaller 2.667 times 10 to the minus 3. So put this number in and this number in. <coughs> Make sure that this is negative. Your y value that you need to put in uh, is going to be 0.2. Your z value is going to be 0.1 and you end up with a stress of minus 4.95 megapascals. To work out the stress at this point here, which is point E, that, that well, if everything's getting squashed in this corner, now this one's getting stretched, so it's just the opposite number. 
So 4.95 megapascals. Now when you look at uh, these corners here, okay, let's think what's happening. So let's work out this bottom one, okay. So the bottom one I can use the same term here. So this bottom one is B. So the stress at B is going to be the same as this term here, minus MZY over IZ. Okay, but this time I want to make sure that I, um, so in this time, in this Y axis, things are turning and it's turning into C, which means it's pulling away from B which means whatever I've used here, I need to reverse the sign, minus M, Y, Z over I, Y. Um, okay, Beca uh, and the reason for that is because the M, the negative, is being kept in here. So minus times minus becomes positive. So this bit of turning is causing it to become positive stress, this bit of turning is causing it to become negative stress. Combine them together and you'll find, I've worked out previously, that we end up with overall a positive stress of 2.25 megapascals. Then you just use the argument of reflection from here to here. So the stress at the top hand corner, which is point D is the reverse of that, minus 2.25 megapascals. Okay, so let's have a look at the thing from above. And you've got E, D, C, and B. You've got that uh, a lot of compression at C of minus 4.95 megapascals. Here you've got um, a tension of 2.25 megapascals. At E you've got 4.95 megapascals and here we've got minus 2.25 megapascals. Okay, so you can see that we've got positive stress all along here, negative stress all along here. We're going from positive to negative along this line, po uh, positive to negative along this line. Think of things now in terms of where's the neutral axis going to be. So the neutral axis is going to be about here, because where is it changing from positive to negative? So it's, it's going to be a bit close to B. Where is it changing from positive to negative or a bit closer to D? So it's going to have a list line. And that is my neutral axis. How can I find my neutral axis? I would probably find this by using geometry. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is to find this length here. I'll call this length 1. So if I imagined I plotted what stress looks like along the line BC. So if I plotted stress along line BC, it would start off a little bit positive and then it becomes negative. So it's going, so sorry I shouldn't have done that. So it's positive and then it goes negative. So it goes to 4.95 negative and then it goes 2.25 positive, uh, right? The distance from here to here is L1. The distance from here to here is going to be the total distance, which is 0.2, take away L1. So notice you've got similar triangles. So we've got a 2.25 and an L1, so that's one triangle. And then I've got a similar triangle of 4.95 with a distance of 0.2 take away L1. 
So similar triangles, ratios of lengths. So 2.25 divided by L1 equals 4.95 divided by 0.2, take away L1. Now uh, you can do the math and you'll find that L1 equals 0 0.0625 meters. Last thing maybe is find that angle here. Let's call it alpha. So how I would do this is I would find this distance here, L2, and this distance here, L3, which I know. L3 is just the distance from the base to the centroid there. So that distance is 0.2. This distance here is going to be 0.1. So that's so that's going to be here. Take away L1. So take away 0 0.0625. Okay. And did I work that out? So that equals 0 0.0375. So all I have to do then is say that the angle alpha is going to be arc tan 0.2 divided by 0 0.0375. Stick that in my calculator and I get 79.4 degrees. Okay, so I know the uh, start position as it were from this base and it's going to be the same length here and I also know the angle